Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games to the Time. Uh, my name is Joachim. Evangelist again. Yeah, and yes. this is the second time we're doing a top 10 and this time we're doing one about games that got us started in the hobby and, and also strengthened it, you know, because there's a game that you start with, but what are the next games that you bought after that and so on. Okay. All right, so I guess we'll do another uh, snake one. So for example, you start and okay. uh, me too and then you again. Okay. So what's your number 10? So my number 10 is a game that... Um, oh, the board game is always a kind of abstract thing, right? So, you know, and there's, there's always a theme, but it's always difficult to realize how theme can come through cards or through deck building. So my first one was actually Legendary Encounters Alien. Oh, wow. Because it was the first time when I played it, it was my first experience with a deck builder. So that was, that was exciting to, you know, the concept of buying the cards and trying to work through getting your combos. So that was very exciting because I never played Magic. I was never, I was never really that much into board gaming, gaming before that. Yeah. But it wasn't just the idea of the deck building, but also to see that a storyline can come through these cards. And just the random cards can create tension, can create a group dynamic, because also it's cooperative, so it was also important. And it was just fascinating to see a, a game that could have this, this dopamine hit off storyline yeah. coming through uh -huh. you know yeah. and like just for simple things like you know the river cards with the, with the alien and the duct it was just so clever that how they used the cards and i realized how much the possibility of this hobby was yeah well i haven't played it you played it i know it's arguably arguably the best mm. legendary one i have marvel yes but uh i haven't played that one uh so yeah but uh, yeah. I no, I, I played Marvel with you I mean, all those years ago, but, <laughs> but and I enjoyed Marvel. But it was when I played Aliens, I saw story coming out of it. Yeah, that, that's what people also say. It's also more logical when you play; yes. it makes more sense. Yes, but Marvel does not really. And the theme, I love the Alien theme. It was just fascinating to see that this hobby can be thematic, can be exciting, and also my first experience with Deck Builder, which was was a lot of fun. Yeah, I can imagine. So that was my number ten. Okay, yeah, I don't have much to say about that since I haven't played it. <laughs> Maybe I should one day. Um, all right, my number 10 uh, is also, because it's, it's kind of like co-op, right? Yes. Um, so mine is also co-op. And for me, many people, their first game is like Pandemic or whatever, yes. when you talk about co-op, was well, not the case for me. For me, it was uh, Forbidden Island. Yeah. And it was just cool first time i saw it was like the the tin box and everything yes. and then you can you have to go around and make sure that the water level is rising you have to get all the artifacts or whatever i don't know i don't own it anymore uh maybe it's back in belgium i don't know and then just have to also have the specific skills for each character that you play as and then you try to just get everything back to the ship i think it is and then you get out and it was just exciting I'd never thought of a board game like that before because I used to play board games when I was a kid, like Hotel or Clue or stuff like that. So I never yes. thought it could go that far, actually. And uh, it was just fun. You know, we worked together. You could play with all your friends and so on. And yeah. Did you play Desert? Uh, yes, I, I had that one as well. Uh, there's another one, right? It came one recently. With the, yeah, with the electricity thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I think after my initial experience with the first one, I kind of like, I, I still got the second one, but it was, I think I was kind of already over that experience because I don't have that many co-ops uh, in my collection, to be honest. I, I used to have Pandemic too, but then it wasn't. I think what's interesting, what was really good about it is theme again. It yeah. was, it was, it's just well integrated the theme of the island. Yeah, if, if you, you, you mess around too much, you, you're gonna yes. fail, right? Because it's gonna be right. And it's just cool to, you never know where it's gonna cave in yeah. or, yeah, it was really, sorry about the cracking of the chairs, but it is what it is. Yeah, so yeah, that's my number 10. Okay. So I should go on to my number nine. My number right? nine. Okay, my number nine is, I don't think we have to spend too much time on this one. Uh, it is one of the most famous board games ever. Many people has it as a gateway. It's not Catan. What is it then? Uh, Kokosan. No, oh, I had that one too, but I didn't put it on because uh, I never bought that myself. Anyway, it's Ticket to Ride. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we played it to death at my grandmother's. Like every Sunday we'd go there and I'd always bring it because I didn't have that many games back then. 
I played so much, it was always so fun, except with my nephew, whose only reason of existence was to block everyone and not even try to win, which was annoying. But uh, aside from that, yeah, just it was just cool because being able, always going for the long uh, route to make you try and try to get everything out there. And yeah, it's, it's always keeping an eye on everybody, collecting the colors. And that's such a simple game, had so much replayability. And, uh, yes, and it's the interaction. Yeah. And it's the short term planning, the long term planning, that, that combination, and mm -hmm. the opportunity, going for the opportunity. It just it gives and you. And risk taking, because you're actually also yes. pushing your luck. Yes. Uh, and if you, at one point, also can be hilarious at times when you're like, oh no, I only have four trains left and I need five. And this is super, exp no, <laughs> so stuff like that that happens. That, uh, yeah, that was really enjoyable. And then we even bought extra maps and everything. Which back was then. you get? Uh, the Asian one. Yes. Uh, that was really good. Um, the that's African the only one. one. The African was my favorite. Yeah? I never oh, played I'm that from Africa. But it's, it's, very, it's very tight and it's very competitive. Uh, I play the app also from yes. time to time. Um, and I even bought it again when I came to Hong Kong. I sold it. I bought it again to play with students, but realized then it actually always takes way too long. Mm. And then sold it again. And now I have the, uh, the, the other one, the Ticket to New York, is it? Yes, the very short yeah, one. The very short one. That one is now getting played. But just it has such a long lifespan. I'm talking about a game 13 years ago. I'm old. Anyway, yeah, that's my number nine. Okay. My number nine is the game that introduced me to. I'm th I'm th I think it's probably the sa same for many people that go to the hobby. Is Lords of Waterdeep. Mm, yeah. I don't know if it's on your list. <laughs> that sounds like it is. <laughs> what? It's just a. It's just a worker placement. It's such a good mechanic. Mm -hmm. It's I love it. Everyone, most people love it. A lot of people love it. So it was just that introduction to. And it's the one thing. It's such a streamlined game. It's an mm. incredibly streamlined game. Um, it's not perfect, and it's not incredibly deep, but it's uh, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so smooth when you play it. It is, yeah. and yeah. the theme is there and not there. The theme, the theme brings you in, but then you realize you're just collecting <laughs> cubes, right? <laughs> not if you go on Etsy or and whatever buy and buy the, the little stains of cubes into actual people, I know, which I kind of wish, want to do. But and also my my first experience with expansion, getting excited about expansion, the extra board and the extra mechanics mm. to, to add to it. But just as an introduction to worker placement and that whole world of it, mm. it was just the perfect game to get you into the hobby. I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's a really really good game, especially the expansions. Yeah. Very mm. good. Yeah. So, okay. That was a word. So number eight. My number eight um, is Marco Polo. The Adventures of Marco Polo. Is the game where you shout Marco and then they say no, Polo? No, not that one. <laughs> but hey, you I'm played not, it. I'm not, no, I'm not surprised because I remember when you first talked about it. You so, well, I'll, I'll say you. you, you yeah, I was incredibly enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing, the thing about it was. It was my first exposure to player powers mm -hmm. in a Euro. And the ability to, to, to be unique in a game, to have these groundbreaking, rule-breaking powers, it, just, it was just so cool. And then to be able to work a strategy around those powers. And also, you know, the, kind of like Tickets Ride in some ways, the, the route building. Yeah. And the this, uh, resource collecting, the dice, uh, dice manipulation. I love the dice dice. Um, dice placement thing mm -hmm. it was just such a cool game to get into the hobby with. yeah because i remember the first time you talked about it I was like yeah and it breaks the game yeah <laughs> everybody it was just breaks so, the game it was so cool because yeah. it was a kind of game like you realize you you jealous of everyone else yeah yeah their powers. doesn't matter which power you have yeah you're like oh i have this power now you had it last time and then you play five minutes i oh, like yours better. Better. <laughs> and this makes the game in uh, replayable because you can try different different tactic, yeah. it's just different strategies with different characters. Because I remember one person could just fly around the map, yes. other people have to pay for travel, I remember that. Yes. So yeah. It was just so neat to be able to be unique in a game and to, to, to every time you played you'd work around your power to have a new strategy, so it's just, every game was like an open, like a yes. potential different game. And it's beautiful too, it's, it's, yeah. it's a good looking for, for, game. Especially for the time, yeah. yeah. Do you play number two? Yes. Uh, is it better? Or? It's it's the same but different, right? So it's not as tight. It's oh. not as uh, stressful as okay. the first one. All right. Because yeah. I, I haven't played the second one and the one that I did play a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. No, I really, I really like it. Yeah. 
My number eight um, has to do with building tactile chaos and travel. You know what I'm talking about? Nothing. And space. That's a big tip. Um, and the galaxy. No. The trucks. trucks <laughs> galaxy, tra galaxy trucker. I've never played it. No? Never oh, played you, it. you have to play it. Because uh, I remember when I got into game, I, did, I wasn't even into games back then, but um, what was that? No, 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 I went to, uh, I went to trip through China, I met some people from Holland and then met them later on at their place. And that guy had a wall of games. And I was like... <laughs> like now it's probably a small collection now, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know what his collection is now. But I'm but... sure like that, collect that wall was probably like a small collection for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. now, yeah, yeah. I think it, my collection dwarves his now. But it was like, and he was like, what do you want to play? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I just choose something. Then we played Double, but I'm not going to talk about Double now. <laughs> And um, which is nice for students, but whatever. And then he brought out Galaxy Trucker. And then we started playing and it was just a blast building your spaceship and like, oh, you know, time. It's like, you have the time pressure yes. because the moment someone picks it, says finished, then the sand timer start running. And yes. then you're like, oh, so, and then of course, when the first time when you play it is the best because you have your ship and then you go on a trip and of course your, your ship is really badly made and then it gets shot to pieces mm. and maybe you still make it and it's hilarious maybe you don't it's still hilarious but then once you get to know the game a little bit it's very easy to build a really nice ship but then you still have if even if you play with first players that are new players you have handicaps that you can put in there and everything to keep yes. it challenging you have different ships you can have like uh, Star Trek ships and everything, you know, it's pretty cool. You have the expansions, it's super cute. Uh, I sold my whole, I had the anniversary edition, 25 years, I mean, later on when I bought it. Uh, but I sold it because it, it was really Kallax unfriendly. And I don't have a new edition now, so it's on my wish list. I'm not in a rush to buy it because I know I like it and will be around for sure. But it's just a lot of fun. Everybody who plays it thinks it's hilarious. So which part of the game do you enjoy the most? The, ca the chaos of the destruction or the building of the ship? It evolves because it is, in the beginning, it's just the chaos that's really cool. Yes. But then afterwards, it's also really nice to have a well-constructed ship that just, you know, smooth sailing but it's not always smooth sailing because sometimes you can still get shot and then the moment you have one opening and the event cards that follow can still mess up your ship but the, the you know probability is a lot lower but then you're like kind of like okay now i just want to get as many points as i can yeah. so it's like an, an extra layer on top of it initially i think it's just uh because you're only supposed to use one hand and you can only flip it over when it's over your board so it's like huh, no, don't do it. Huh, and then you put them back face up Okay. So people are like, you're constantly looking at what you want. And uh, yeah, and you have different aliens that give different powers, give you boosts. And it's so cute, all the little things. Was the new version changed in any way? Did it change the rules or was it the same? I think, I don't know, but I imagine they would have streamlined it because it maybe may be a little bit easier for people to get into it. Because if you, it's, I mean, I guess it might be a little bit difficult for new players to get a grasp of all the new, of all the tiles immediately. Because yes. I used to print out uh, like cheat sheets maybe that came with the game now so you can just look at it okay what is this again okay quickly so yeah i haven't like i said i just want it but uh, i haven't checked up on it that's cool know? but it's definitely you know if you want to have a especially with kids you know if my kids mm -hmm. are a little bit older for sure thank you, you know, i'll do my seven right yeah yeah seven. My seven ah my seven is about royalty in japan King of Tokyo. <laughs> it's not, not about royalty in Japan, but it's about monsters. I didn't think of that one, yeah. Monsters yeah. fighting in a ring. Well, not a ring, but in Tokyo. Um, that just introduced me to player elimination, basically. And just trying to just take out people on the, uh, uh, at the table and trying to win that way. But, of course, you can win with the points, but that's not why you play, if you ask But it's like that filler, that... that yeah, it's also, it also goes really fast. The, yes. the monsters are cool. The dice are chunky. The art on the cards that you can buy with your energy, that's all awesome. Yeah. And the, the like for example, if you want to have an extra die that nobody else has, you have a, has a card that says, it has two heads yes. or whatever. Or a card that when you die, you come back out, uh, you, you return back to life because it has a child. Stuff like that. Yeah. It's just hilarious. It was just fun. It just shows that the game doesn't have to be heavy. 
Yeah. It doesn't have to exactly, be complex. Yeah. It could just be, it's yeah. just about fun. Yeah. Uh, interacting with each other and laughing. Yes, it's a good choice. I didn't think of that one. And then the, the numbers that are added for the points and then yes. the energy with the cards that adds a little bit spice. So you have King of New York. I didn't really like that one. I like the Dark Edition a lot because it has the uh, extra track. Yes. And the power up stuff that's included. And now the King of the Island or whatever, yes. Monster Island. I have the that car, one. The car, did you buy it? Yeah, I have it. Yeah. Yeah. I only played it once. Uh, really, really nice. I also had it, I sold it as well. Mm. But I kind of wish they would bring it with miniatures. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I play with I students now, so yeah. I think, yeah, mm. I think yeah, they're useless. I just want those miniatures. Yeah, yeah, that would be very nice. Yeah. 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 Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My number seven. Um, it's the game that introduced me to the Dungeon Crawl mm. and that Zombicide Black Plague. Ah, uh, yeah. Never played it. Yeah. Never played it? No, no. Uh, the only Zombicide I have coming is Marvel, so it's my first Zombicide ever. Okay. A virgin. But just, it was like, it was just, again, <laughs> the, the idea of this, again, as a co-op game with, with friends and the idea you, you got these monsters and you, you build up your characters. It was kind of like being, play, being able to play D&D light. Yeah. So, because... You know, because D&D is not an investment and it's difficult to get a D&D game going. And this was just a D&D on a table, as yeah. it was, right? And you just pull out and you could... Um, but I always thought it looked really awesome. I just never had the, the, the opportunity to play it or, or maybe I have and realized whatever. But I, uh, And the Kickstarters were always a bit super bloated, I thought. Yeah, but, maybe, but yeah. there was also that, you know, get the FOMO. There was another, maybe it was also yes, for, for the hobby, got me into the hobby is the FOMO. But I can't, I can't really bash on it anymore because I'm back Marvel. So Marvel, yeah, Marvel. You know, but it was just, it was just again the first introduction to the dungeon crawl, and again not too heavy, not too complex, but being around tables, friends, and, and just bashing things, and bashing, bashing monsters, bashing zombies, and especially the, the Black Plague, which was, which had the medieval theme, which was again a mm. nice twist on the uh, a zombie theme. It was just cool, you know. And again, all the different characters with different powers. Have you played others in the series? I played the original. Yeah. And that's it. Okay, and Black Plague is definitely better. Black Plague yeah. is better. I don't have the second edition of the Zombie Sides because I think it's made the same rules. But mm. I always felt, do I need the one in space? No, I prefer the medieval one. Do I need the one that's Western? I prefer the medieval one. Yeah. I just yeah. came, I just, I was happy with the Black Plague. Uh, you can imagine swords cleaving skulls. Yeah. Exactly, it's more fun, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think sure. if this didn't exist, uh, yeah, I'd get, I'd, I'd like to have one of them in my collection. I don't think I need more than one. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I always hear people who do have zombie side, they always end up selling, if they have more than one, they yes. sell up selling, end up selling one. Yeah. yeah. But then that's the thing, at least with your your Marvel ones coming, it's different, it's a different game. Yeah, okay. So I it's didn't like, jump the train, I jumped the tram. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that was my uh, genre call. The next game, my number six, uh, it, was, it was a concept when I heard about it that just got me so excited I want to play. I wanted to play this game and play more games like that. And that was the hidden traitor game. Uh. The idea of a hidden traitor on the table to to manipulate each other over a board game. I can, where, I can think of two. Well, it, I had to put them all together, so I went for the uh. first one. But the first one was Shadows of Camelot. Oh, okay, that was not one I was thinking. No, and then obviously this Dead of Winter and, and, and Battle of Galactica. Those two it's one of those, it was those three. They all came out. They all came out at the same time. Yeah. So I didn't know which one to choose. So I chose Shadows because that was the first one mm -hmm. I played. But just it was just again getting into the hobby to think the possibilities of a board game to be on the table and someone Sorry. you can't trust the someone at your table and then that could be you and then you try to manipulate your friends and all yeah. while playing this game and you play, do you play different games to anyone else? Oh. That was just so exciting. But which one of those three did you play the most? You think? Um, I played Shadows most because that was the easiest one to get to the table. I never played that one. I played Battlestar Galactica a lot and yes. I used to own it and then I sold it for a much higher price than I ever bought it. The reason why I sold it because is because you really need to have a good group to play it with. Yes. And I think like maybe two or three times out of five, I would have a good group, but then two times of those five, it would fall flat. Especially when the game's so long. Yeah, exactly. And then the traitor is just a bad player. Yeah, yeah, but I've had games as well where people from the get go is like, you know, you're a total, no, yeah. no, no way proof, and then just keep going and keep going and keep going, and then in the end, you know, it, it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, anyway. But even Dead of Winter, <laughs> all three, I, I really enjoyed all three of them. Dead of yeah. Winter's great. The thema- again, the theme came through. I could have added Bellastar Galactica as well, but that came later. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I, didn't, I, did, I didn't put it there. Uh, it was actually one, it's one of my honorable mention, mentions. Okay. Yeah, because that did come and that, that did introduce me to a whole new range, like you said. Yeah, and, um, yeah I mean, part of me regrets selling it. But then it's it was it was getting difficult to table because the mm. series is more and more distant, in the, yeah, distant in the, in the background, and people don't really know, and you don't need to know it to enjoy it. But it definitely it helps. helps you role play. Yeah, yeah, it definitely helps. Yeah, because now what's the point if I play Saul and I get drunk and nobody knows why? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but I did, I did get I did get unfindable because ah, yes, but is it is it is it exactly the same? Yeah. Okay. Just with Cthulhu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe I should try it. I don't know. Mm. It, the, the, the theme, I used to be a big Cthulhu fan, but then it got so much and everywhere. and mm. uh, not, not that crazy about it anymore. But maybe if I play it again, you know, I'll scratch the itch I don't know I have at the moment. Whatever. Seven. So what's, six, six, six. what's your number six? Ah, uh, my six is uh, the reason why I bought... Uh, Oh, I, I recently I have videos up from uh, Agents of Smirch. Uh, is the storytelling games that focus 100% mm. on stories and have some mechanics on the side, but mostly just story, story, story. And that is Tales of the Arabian Nights. And is honest, it even a game? You can play it as a game, but then people at the table are going to be like, you're finishing the story already? Why? <laughs> because you want to know what happens to your character. So yes. the people who don't know what I'm talking about, basically you move your character a certain amount of spaces and then you draw a card, it has a number, and then uh, depending on the space and the number, you look at an adventure book and then it says, okay, this is the scenario, this is the little, little bit of story, the setting, right? And now you can react in one of nine ways or whatever. For example, you meet an old lady uh, what are you going to do? Oh, rob her, kidnap her, ask her for help, talk to her, blah, 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 all those kind of things. And sometimes you just say, you know what? Let's kidnap her. Why would you kidnap an only? So, and then there's an insert, uh, there's, uh, there's yeah. a passage somewhere in the book that's talking about that. And you have to check your skills. And you have so many different skills you can acquire. So much stuff can happen to you. You can get turned into an ape. You can be crippled. You can change genders. You can end up in, it has like these, I think, 10 maybe more than 10 specific locations like a fantasy location where you can end up that is really pages long of a long long uh, adventure that you can do and you're trying to get at least to one of those locations every game and if you have like i think it's faith and legend or something has two tracks and the beginning of the game you kind of you have like you have to I think combined get twenty points or something. You choose and put it under your board, and if you get a combination of those points, then you can go back to Baghdad and then you win the game. Okay. But at the end, everyone's at twenty twenty, and people are still playing. <laughs> so you can win the game. It's like okay, I'm getting tired of it. Uh, okay, let's finish up. Do you still have the game? No. Uh, bought it, sold it. Came to Hong Kong, bought it, sold it, and then I bought Agents of Smirch. But so far, I think is really underwhelming. I had so big of an expectation because it's like spy theme mm-hmm. and has all the, the, the James Bonds in there and all that, that kind of stuff and uh, references to the spy who shagged me and everything, all that, all that kind of stuff. But it really wants you to treat it as a game because it has like a timer and everything. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. I want to have the freedom to just go out and have adventures and everything. So I'm not, I'm going to try it again at a more difficult setting, see maybe I'll like it more, I don't know. But uh, Tales of Arabian Nights, you cannot play too much though. Because then you start, you know, the, the same things come up again. Mm-hmm. But like once or twice a year, is just a barrel of laughs to see what happens to you. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I can, I can, yeah, I'm going to stop talking about it because I can keep talking about it. <laughs> My number five is probably a game I play with you as well because I used to have such a big set. That I also sold. Okay, many of these that I sold are actually still on my wish list because at one point I had to move house to a smaller place and I just really didn't have uh, the room. So I sold a lot of my collection then. Anyway, uh, it's Smash Up. And that introduced me to basically co op based destroying mm-hmm. while actually not really co op because you're trying to get the majority of points and so on. And just. 
They would say, oh, you take two decks and you smash them together. Yeah. <laughs> so vampires with kind of pirates, vampire pirates. And then you shuffle them and then you take it in hand and then you can play those cards to different bases and try to destroy the bases. If you're the only one there, everybody else is dumb because you're trying to take points away. If you destroy the base, yeah. you get points. And uh, there's also effects on each card and so on. I mean, many other games have, have, have copied certain parts of that game already, and, but they're still going. Yeah. There's still sets coming out, and, um, and they'll keep going. I think there was even a set to say, I, prom I know we promised we would stop, but. <laughs> so, and a part of me wants to get it again, but I'm like, I think now it's too much of a money sink. If there's too much out, and then how much am I going to play it again? And it's more like a fond memory. Do I really want to go back to it? Because. Just now, get the base game. Oh no, that, oof, that's not, it's not enough. Because I remember doing meetups and then here in Hong two Kong. Two tables, and, like two or three tables, yeah. Yeah, but then before people came up, all the sets were like yeah. placed on the table. And I was like, choose two. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, whoa, ghosts with this and then and then. Yeah. And it's just awesome. And then you had like the special uh, editions as well, like different foil cards or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was just, yeah. It was, it was, but that's what that's that's kind of like it's a really nice memory. I don't know if I want to go back to it just to, I don't know, maybe potentially ruin it or whatever. I don't know. Let's see, maybe Again, one day. It's such back. a clean game, just a very simple, clean game. And mm. The art is great on each card. The games are relatively short. Yes. Depending on the on the factions, because some factions can drag it out. Um, and dinosaurs you've got as well. You know, mm. pirate dinosaurs, whatever. It's all about finding out your favorite combo and things like that. Yeah. 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 That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, okay. Smash up. So mine is a Cthulhu game. Ah, love letter. No. <laughs> so my introduction to, again, the cooperative game, the cooperative, uh, it's Eldritch Horror. Ah, uh, I thought it was the other one, the really, really long one. No, uh, Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror, no, no, yeah. no, There was, or uh, Eldritch Horror was, was, was the one that came out that time. Mm. When I was talking the game. But again, it was just the cool mythos, the, the theme it was mm. really cool. Again, it's kind of like the Dungeon Call, but different. You, you're going around putting out fires, it was, a it was a cooperative game, but with a really cool theme, and it kind of had the role-playing aspect to it, when you have your mm -hmm. character, you buy items, you build yourself up. So it's just, again, it was a game that created story. Yeah. And uh, that was just exciting to gain, to see how just plastic and cardboard can create stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and just, and then again, it was, a, it was a communal thing around the table with other people, you were stressing about doing this, arguing what you should do, and just, Again, it was just it was just a cool epic time at the table. And then when you played at home, I mean, I haven't played that one, but mm -hmm. I played Elder Sign, I played Mansions of Madness. Basically, yes. all, it's not the same, but the theme is the same. Yes. And then if you on play on, on YouTube, you have amazing playlists. Yeah. yeah. For for it's that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, like like radio that's like crackling, fading out, and stuff like that. Oh, it's just really really. So nice. again, it's just another again interesting mm -hmm. the hobby the idea of this. Just so much theme can come out of the game. And then when you actually manage to beat the game, it's really like, we did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have that stand-up moments when you, you know, it's coming through the portal and you've got to, you've got to, you mm. come up with some bra hair-brained idea of how we're going to kill it and then you end up doing it. And it's just, yeah, it's an yeah. awesome moment, right? Yeah. I've never played that one, but, and Arkham Horror, I haven't played that one either, but uh, mm. the theme I like a lot. Which is kind of strange because do you have the same feeling when you play Unfathomable? Unfathomable? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah? Yeah. Because oh, okay. yeah. a lot of the cards have a similar theme to the Old Child, right? Ah. And the characters feel the same, they have similar powers. So ah, that's how okay. it does come across. Ah, so it's not like Soul in the. In the no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, my number, so I go to number four. Yes. Okay, so my number four is another game that, that introduced me to the money sink of Kickstarter. Really? And that's Blood Rage. Ah, yeah. So it was also the idea of the dude on the map game. Yeah. It's just that it's just one of the, my favorite, one of my favorite. I could have put other ones. I could have put down Cyclades. It was another one who got me into the hobby, mm -hmm. or Kemet. Just the idea of having your little, your little minute, your little men on the board, and a light tactical. You, you think you're very clever, making moving in position here, <laughs> doing this, doing that, fighting, fighting each other, yeah. and. I think I put Blood Rage more because it was just the idea of the miniatures. And drafting as well? Drafting all that, yes, true, I never thought of that. But it was more the miniatures, again, the whole yeah, world. And yeah. now that I started painting, it's even more so. But even then, it just, it, the board, the game came to life with the miniatures. 
And it's very cool when you, you have the big monsters on the board. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I'll play this card. No. Exactly. Boom. And you put the thing there. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's also you're, you're doing tactics, trying to work, trying to think each other. It made you feel like a little, you know, you know that you little genius, you know, like little Napoleon make, making maneuvers. Yeah. And I don't know, it was just, it was just a, to realize there was so much more of this art thing. Mm. The dudes in the map. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite genres, the, the dudes in the map genre. So yeah. That's Especially the one that with really, five people, it's just. Really cool, Chef's yeah. kiss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, so, games... the same with Soul, uh, same with uh, uh, exact, um, um, Cyclades. That mm. was also one that really cool. I used to own that back in Belgium, but mm. I didn't put it on because I, I think I only played it ever like two players or whatever. I didn't have no, enough people you need, back you then. Need lots of people to play. Yeah, it. I didn't have enough people back then. They are releasing it. Yeah? They are releasing it. Oh, okay, just a reprint. Uh, no, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna oh. streamline it, and I think. New mm. Villages, a new, it's a new publisher. Okay. If you think these top 10 lists are bad for your wallet, it's also <laughs> bad for our wallets. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your number four? Uh, my number four is, I thought it would be on your list. Maybe it's still still coming because mm-hmm. uh, you still have zero crossover. <laughs> At least I'm smarter now. I'm not going to say we are going to have 10 crossover. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and that's Kingsburg. I forgot to put it in. <laughs> it's an honorable mention. It's supposed to be there. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Uh, because I remember that I had it, and then you were like, I can't find the expansion. <laughs> uh, I managed to find it, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it's over here. I forgot to put it in. I... Okay, so it's a crossover. I would probably take in Adult of Waterdeep for that. Okay, so it's a crossover. Yeah. Uh, you know, dice placement, oh, obviously. Such uh, a good game. Yeah. And uh, not even... This is the dice placement. You have the little bit of the, 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 the building as well, but of course, just the idea of you're rolling a bunch of dice and then you have to figure out where you want to go, but then other people might go to that spot and yeah. so on. And and what and building up your tableau of your buildings. Yeah, yeah taking exactly. Taking powers. The different, the different lines. And then with the expansion, the it even threat, gets better. And the threat track. Yeah. Of uh, the, yeah. The, yeah. Like the monsters coming through. One thing, though, with the expansion, the cards, the event yeah, the cards. the king dies one. The king dies. We had it that he died in the third round once. Yeah, just and we shuffled. Out. But you know, that was it. The game was over. <laughs> okay, so that was what we got. The rest of the game. <laughs> so, such a good game, and the game. art and, and the art was so warm and inviting. Yeah, the new edition is really horrible. Bad. I refuse to buy oh, it. Oh my goodness! Yeah, me, me too. It's just it's just it's ugly. It's I don't know who thought oh. of doing that, but it just ruined everything. Yes, um, which is was kind of it's kind of, it's kind of pity because they got expansion in there that I really would like to have. Mm. But I will not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to trade my my copy for that. I, I don't have my copy anymore again because of the big call. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that. I think back then I only kept like five or six games. I think. Sure. And then we're talking 2016, and now I'm at 250. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so no, that's a good. That's that's should have been on my list. But it's an awesome. And people incredible. love it immediately. Yeah. And then you also, even if you're like rolling really badly, you get the white die, so you get an extra yeah. die to compensate if you're like if you have the least amount of points. Yeah. Uh, to get you back in, and you have to, like they said, the threat. You have to fight fight these uh, enemies. The balance, the doing balance and everything, yeah. and and then you have to kind of work together to fight the threat. But if you don't, then the threat might. And also uh, that you know, yeah, you you also, and you got that interaction, like you're worrying about each other. What he's going to do this, he's going to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was a f- no, no. That's a great call. And I remember you can look at the th- at the at the card. Yes. And then it's like, like oh, I'm going to get more wood or whatever. Oh no, he's going to build a zombie thing. It's probably zombies, but it's not zombies at yeah. all. I'm just bluffing and yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. It's yeah, such it's, a good game. Yeah, but the new edition. Oh my goodness, no, yeah. no, really, really bad. Um, those four, right? Yeah, is it is it you now or my, me? You, you, cause you. Okay, uh, me. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So this one actually started for real the hobby for me. It's like okay. the first one that I, because I went into a local store in the city I was living in back then, and a comic book store, mm-hmm. and then I went to the back, and suddenly there was a wall full of games that was not just the typical stuff, and. Uh, Back then, uh, my partner said, "Oh, uh, why don't you why don't you buy one?" And I was like, "Huh? Oh, it's your birthday anyway, right?" I said, "Yeah, I'll buy it for you." I said, "Okay, cool." So, I ended up buying it, and that was Seven Wonders. 
And even though with two people, it is not a good game because you can abuse the third dummy player like crazy. Yeah. But with more people, it is so good. It plays so fast. Uh, cool. yeah. Tableau building, um, the fact you can buy from your neighbors and they can't stop you. Uh, um, you also have the warfare. It, it, it gradually becomes more compl complicated from age yes. to age. You have the end game scoring that really, that, that, that also was a big thing. Like, you know, end game yes. scoring was like, in most games that I had back then, it didn't happen. It's just like Monopoly and everything. It's not like, game's over, let's count out the score. No, you just already know. Um, and the timing was just right. It wasn't long, it wasn't short. It yeah. was the perfect timing. You could play multiple games. Yeah. Like People would say, like, okay, I know how to play. Well, we only spent 40 minutes, so let's play again. And it's just as long with, it, with seven players as it is with four players. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, you're right. And expansions? Do you like expansions? Um, not really. Because people say, oh, it gives the game focus, but I don't like the focus. Like with leaders, you're going to go for a certain strategy. Yeah. And I, I like the openness for the strategies. And I have Seven Wonders Architects. It's supposed to be really good, but I haven't tried it yet. Well, have you uh, Seven Wonders Duel? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's excellent. I think yeah, that's but then that really same good. that same partner <laughs> at one point said, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> so that was in Hong Kong when we arrived here first. And then I started the meetup group. So if she had never said that, yeah, I would have meeting. never met. So Fair it is enough. where it is now. So uh, back then I sold it then, obviously, because it's a two-player game. I like that as well. But I, I always, I like and dislike the fact when you reveal something and then, like you take a card and then two cards are revealed and it's better for the next person. So it's a bit like. Mm. <laughs> That's why the expansion actually makes it, makes it better because yeah. there's a way to delay. You can do something else except uh, okay, instead yeah. of the Parthenon one, you can. It, it's, mm -hmm. it blocks that uh, rhythm oh, okay. where you can actually pause and do something else instead and so force the other guy to the mm. opponents to do interesting to, to reveal yeah so, yeah yeah but anyway yeah so that's uh, Seven Wonders I was, did you ever play with the bubble expansion no. that always looked cool but probably but, more comp too but complex which but is then I thought it looked very bloated everything together yeah the whole point about stream, Seven Wonders it was a streamlined but the new edition maybe takes care of it? I don't know. They didn't put Bebel in the new edition. Ah, oh, okay. That's what you think, except Bebel. So it's even got oh. the Navy expansion. Ah, oh, okay. I'll try that. But I like stuff with the leaders and the cities, I think, was okay. I'm not sure anymore. But anyway, anything that, that would force me into a certain strategy, I didn't like. Because with the original one, you can go in any direction. Okay. That was the big appeal for me. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my number three is another one that introduced me to a kind of genre that I was really excited about. And that would be um, the one versus many. So, like, and I'll say, and also the theme. This, the particular game was the, th for both of them, actually, I was really excited about the, the theme of both these games. And that's Fury of Dracula uh, yeah. and Letters from Whitechapel. Oh, okay. I haven't played either. They're both great. Yeah. The idea of the one person against the, uh, everyone else. So that was just a fun, again, we're talking about what goes into the hobby. So it was just introducing me to new, Mm. Ways because you, you know, in the past, it was always you know, Monopoly, there was always this, the same it type can of game. It also games. be one versus me, <laughs> yeah. <fair enough. laughs> but the thing was, it was just this, it was just a different way. Of, okay, obviously, it was Scotland Yard, which is one versus many, which is a which is a mass market game, yeah. But it was just this, it was just a cool scene where one person is Dracula, that one gives a new dimension, exactly. Right? Yeah. It was just a, it was again, this endless possibilities. And the other one was one person is Jack the Ripper, and everyone's the police trying to catch him. Mm. And they had this super thematic board, both of them had very thematic maps as a board. Yeah. An idea of one person sitting there secretly planning while everyone's working together. Because with Dracula, you have to move your coffin and everything as well, right? Isn't it? Um, that's yeah. part. Yeah, you can. You can. You you, you place your coffins around Europe to oh, come yeah, sleep yeah, in. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. But it was just. It was just again very thematic and very tense. And the, the hidden movement genre is one of my favorites. Yeah. Simply because, for one thing, it's um, it's two very different. Two, two people are playing two different games, which is fun. Mm. And as one person, he's, he's, he's intellect against another group, and the group working against him. Mm. It's just tense, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Because I, I remember you you like those kind of games because you also are very excited about Narcos. Narcos is cool, too. Yeah. 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 I really like, like Mind Management, the new one that came out. It's really good. Yeah, I still haven't played it. Yeah. <laughs> and there was <laughs> you know, Spectre Ops. Yeah. A lot of them. There's, there's a lot of these games that I really do like. Beast, we, we both brought back yes, Beast. Yes, yes, It's just a genre I really enjoy. And then again, it got me to the hobby because it was, exposed me to this new type of So you, do you prefer to play Dracula or you try to find them more? Um, both. It depends the, the group. But usually because I'm always hosting games, I always let the, 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 the people decide if they want someone else to be Dracula first. Mm. So you just 
tell them? Do you want to have depends. an easy game or a difficult game? It depends. If someone really wants to be Dracula, they can be Dracula. Mm. But sometimes if they want to, yeah. if they if they sometimes they feel tense, they, they feel a little nervous, and say, okay, I'll be Dracula. Yeah. And, and it ends up becoming like you, 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 you've been a DM, right? Like just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Master, more yeah. like anything. Because imagine for them it would be way more difficult if you're Dracula, but then the other way around, it's too easy for you exactly. if somebody so else is Dracula. Screw, <laughs> they're screwed, they're screwed up. So it's more like, you don't. You just want to make have them make have fun. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah, I prefer both. Cool. Does that? But that I never played nuns. I, the, to I never played nuns on the run. Uh, that, that looks but that's not stupid. one versus many. That's many versus the nuns. <laughs> the nuns are not a player. Is that a player? No, I the nuns was, are. Okay. Right. No. no, no, the nuns are just walking around and they try to stop you. And you have to just check. Oh, they hear you. Then they come after okay. you. And then they're not a player. No. It's just you, everyone is just hidden and you're like writing down and then go. And I think so. Or is someone the nuns? I, I forgot so. now. I, I so. used to own it. Uh, I, haven't played I guess it, it would make sense. But then there's cards where the nuns have to follow around. around so I don't think so. Because otherwise, why would you have a, a set? I don't know. Oh, well, no. I'll put it on the screen to see who's <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I really don't remember. Uh, so me, number two. Yeah. Yes, yes. So my number two was my introduction to the first it's, it's not a heavy, heavy game. It's not like a splotter game. But my first introduction to a heavier game than, um, than Lords of Waterdeep. And again, excited about that. It's some of my favorite designers, favorite series of games. And that's the T-series, which is Tolkien. Mm, yeah. it's, again, it was, it was a step up from, um, from Lords of Waterdeep. And again, that really got me into, that, on, into the, the genre of, the heavy, of a heavy, mid, mid-heavy Euro and just also the gears and the, the planning ahead and the resource management. Yeah. And okay, the gimmick of the gears, but it was just so cool. Mm-hmm. And just the different strategies, buying the buildings. Again, it was a first heavyish game. Mm-hmm. And it just, it was so exciting to play that game. And not easy if other people have played before. Yes, but then mm-hmm. that just drives you to be to play, yeah. play better. It's more motivation, yeah. Yeah, it, it was just, it was one of the games that really. Exciting also, the problem. first feeding your own people mechanic. Yes, which is part of the game. It was, it was exciting because it made me force me to become hmm. uh, to plan ahead and to, to again the resource management and. Yeah, yeah, I don't have it anymore. But <laughs> yeah, because uh, I to to a con. Yes. But um, I like the entire series. They're all great. Yeah, they, they are for sure. They are because it's still on my wish list again for maybe one day to buy it again because mm. it's one once again a game that you can easily bring out to new people yes. and they'll get excited just by looking at the board yes and the only thing they have to kind of wrap their head around is kind of maybe the fact that the buildings are kind of like a must yes uh, and um, the technology tracks as well but again it's, it's again it's, okay just the streamline of it right mm-hmm. you have two options Pick up workers or yeah. put, them, put them down, and yeah, just exactly. again, it's it's always, it's. it's always, make sure it's, you can feed them. Make sure you can feed them. <laughs> Otherwise, they're big. <laughs> but it's, it's just again, you have two options. But again, those options have so much possibilities, and it's, it's, it's really exciting. So yeah, I, yeah. I just love that game. Even though in many ways, I think it's been solved. Yeah, I'm sure that the strategies. It's just yeah. like it's it's kind of solved. But then that that's I think people often say if you have a big collection of games, you don't appreciate the games enough you don't play them enough and yes. so on but on the other hand i always say yeah but every time i play a game it feels like i'm rediscovering everything again exactly which, I play which is the really team. nice yeah like if i play Tolkien for the 30th time in three months or something i might be like oh you know here we are again yeah so definitely yeah. whereas if i play Tolkien now i haven't played it for six months mm-hmm. it's like playing it for the first time again in many ways yeah exactly yeah. and then with the expansion as well the yeah balance. the expansion does change the the fact that this is kind of solved because it does bring a little crinkles to it to yeah. a predictability to it mm-hmm. the expansion is really fun too because you have the powers which is great and you also have the prophecies mm-hmm. yes which yes, yes. I, I really i I said it's my first exposure to that kind of game i really yeah. love it i don't really have a, a super complicated game on here but I guess uh, I think I should have added that one. Which one? Okay, I'll. I'll one that, of the mentions. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna make it a a, a co place with my number one. I'll okay. Explain why? Because okay. they were both uh, they both blew my mind. So what's your number two? My number two is our I guess second crossover now, and that is Lords of Waterdeep. I knew it would be. 
Yeah, it's the How first. Could not be? I think for most people it would be that. Work replacement, right? Yeah. Although I think many people have Stone Age. Yes. But I've never played that because I was like, I have Lords ones. of Waterdeep, so why would I need Stone Age? But I've never played that one, so. But Lords of Waterdeep, yeah, it's just it was just really cool. The missions yeah. and then the intrigue. And then I had games where I just always went intrigued to just mess with people because mm -hmm. it was fun. And then with the expansion, you have the 40 point missions that you can go for that can be like, boom, you'd be like, yes. what? And, and, attention for, and attention for worker spots. Mm -hmm. And the, the buildings thing. that come out on the side. Buildings, you yes. can just go full builder. But then, I think that, that one's a bit overpowered, the builder lord, mm. because this gives a lot of points. But anyway, enough of that. And there's a the one card that says, okay, now you cannot stop me anymore, yeah. that lord, whatever. Because I yeah. played that like online as well. Yeah, I stopped, uh, I stopped playing online because of that card. Exactly. Yeah. Open lord. Yeah, it's open lord, lord yeah. card. That card's just broken. <laughs> so, Especially two. But just the fun of those buildings, you never know which buildings are going to come out yes. every game. And then it gives you so many options where to go. The corruption is also a neat part uh, where you can just rack up corruption. And the second part of the game, you try to get rid of it as much as possible. Yeah. Like, hey, wait, what's going on? And even though it's very simple, I did play with one person who, even though we explained the rules well enough, that person thought it was just it was good enough to have the missions to get points instead of actually doing them. Just collect the missions. Yeah, so at one point he had like 13 minutes. We're like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, I'm just getting as many missions. <laughs> so it was quite, but it was someone who's not used to playing board games. We still have fun though, not, notwithstanding. But there's, my point is just there's a lot of stories also interwoven. Yeah. I remember when yeah, we played that time. Um, and I did have the upgraded meeples, but then people just say, ah, I need five orange guys. Well, there goes the team. Yeah. But <laughs> it's been the same five orange cubes. Mm. And so, so, yeah, just, it's always better, yeah. And then, weird thing though, that edition that I bought, right, from the store, shrink wrapped and everything, I played it a, numer a numerous amount of times. Uh, I bought it, and in the end, I, I sold it again because I got tired of it, and there's other worker placement games, right? And then the person who bought it said, why is there a ripped card underneath the insert? I was like, what are you talking about? And then he took a picture of a card that was sleeved, but was torn in two in a sleeve underneath the insert. I was like, what? <laughs> so I have no idea how that ever happened. And I was just like, oh, I gave him back $50, Hong Kong dollars. <laughs> And he said, it's okay, I can play anyway, because he had some kind of solution for it, whatever, which is nice. But I was like, I don't know, maybe one day I played with someone and they messed like it up me. and you put must it like underneath. Yeah, some of you hosted it. I don't know, I must be, yeah, no, it's very weird. Most because likely when you hosted it. It's one of those stories that you're like, what? <laughs> Super weird, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so that's my number two. Mm -hmm. And then the number one, right? So it's a... It's a the dual one. The dual one, yeah. Um, but actually, let's just make it the one that I didn't write. That will be number one because the other one, I'll make an honorable mention because mm -hmm. that part has already, you, you could find it in the other games as well. My number one is the one that really brought home theme with me, the idea of kind of like a dungeon crawl, you get stronger and stronger. You have a ton of options every time when it's your turn. Uh, it is epic in scale. You can have a shorter game, or you can have really long games if you want, and that's Mage Knight. I thought it'd be on your list. Yeah, but I didn't actually think about it until just a okay. couple of minutes ago. Uh, and what I liked about it is I could introduce it to people. We could play, even with four, which is not recommended, and we can be five hours later, and I'd be like, oh, Crap, I've been playing that long. I'm sorry. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's keep going. <laughs> You're gonna be really yeah. excited. Of course, don't play with anyone with AP. But the fact that you can have your hand of cards, only seven. No, no. Starts with uh, five or six, and then when you get stronger, you get more. Yes. But you can use every card for everything. Like if you don't have any movement cards, oh, just put it sideways. It's now move one, or it's attack yeah. one, or block one. Multi-use card. Yeah, everyone does multi-use card. Yeah. Yeah, these days just printed on the cards, but just like the yeah. fact that, and then it's your turn, and you can go in basically in any direction, do whatever you want because of those use. You have the, you have done the the, the magic that you can that you have. The characters are slightly different, only like two cards in the deck in, in the deck for each person. So you, uh, you have the, your little army that you're creating, you're, you're, you're going on these, I wouldn't say quests, but you're just like going into... Um, Again, storyline coming from the from the player rather than the game. Yeah. You right. create your own story, right? Yeah. Rather than and the story you can, you can give it to you. You can hire 
army, people, uh, soldiers everywhere, or just units in your army. But you can also just go to say for a monastery. You can heal. Yeah. You can. Or you can burn it down. Yes, you can burn it down and get bad uh, yeah. um, reputation. But then that bad reputation will make it easier to hire other types of units which require yeah. bad reputation. So it's, you can be basically a jerk. Uh, or just a horrible <laughs> killer, whatever, and still get troops. Yeah. It doesn't punish you necessarily for that. And then you also have the expansions that add more stuff to it. And even fighting, because it used to be very difficult to play, and most people when they buy now, they still find it difficult. But as with every board game, once you get it, you get it, and you don't forget it. Like, yes. I, I haven't played in probably a year and a half. If I take the box now, 80%, I can still immediately do. Are you happy with the content, or do you show more? I'm quite happy. I actually always play the same thing. Yeah. Like there's so many scenarios, but I always play the same scenario. Uh, because I play it once, maybe twice or three times in a month, and then I put it away again for a while because I do other stuff. Okay. Um, but it's been consistently in my top 10, I think. I don't know if it's this year in my top 10 for my top 100, but in many years it's been in my top 10. Often number one or two or three or whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe not anymore now because there's so much new stuff. And once you get used to a game, you appreciate it less, I think. True. I so, uh, yeah, I think that could be my, my, my number one. Just so many stories as well, you know, coming home with a couple of friends like uh, eight in the evening. Oh, what do you want to do? Oh, let's play Mage Night. And then like six in the morning, let's go get breakfast at McDonald's. <laughs> so just because you, yeah, and people always love it as well. And solo? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Because I even bought the uh, Etsy upgrades, okay. and those, those are the ones I'm painting and have not stopped. But that basically gets miniatures for all the terrain, so it yeah. actually becomes more of a map. Uh, That's cool. I'm really excited to eventually finish painting it and then playing with all the stuff. It's going to make it look even prettier. And uh, yeah, I know it's kind of like a love it or, or hate it kind of game. Because uh, there's people uh, I talk to who really hate it. I went there once and it was at your place. And, oh, no, with Andrew's house. Yeah, Andrew's house. I won. That's yeah. what I remember is I won. It was, it was a lot of fun. So and obviously then, it was a great game because I won. And then you retired I at retired. the peak it's, of your... <laughs> <laughs> okay. For me, number one was, was, was clear. Um, I never played a hobby board game before. I've only played like Lisk and game, uh, and um, let me sort of the answer there. And, and Clue, Cluedo and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. For me, the first game was when I first got here to Hong Kong and one of the, my colleagues at, at my work, he said, come and play off the game, we, we would play a board game. So I went mm. there and we played Game of Thrones, the board game. Mm. And it was, it was our first proper proper hobby board game. Yeah. And I just, it was it just like, blew my mind. that we had Because I love the books too. And there was just, mm. that we had the full map and you had the hand of cards with powers and we had five players at the time. I think we had five players. Mm-hmm. I think we had six. Doesn't matter. But it just, it was just, it was beautiful. The components were cool, and there was the strategy behind it. And I, it just, and that was the day when I finished playing that game. And he's asked, I went and bought it, and then I joined the meetup because I wanted to see play more games. That was the game that got me going. Ah, yeah, I can and imagine it, that would do it. <laughs> yeah, because it was just, it was just, it just. Because again, the possibilities, it wasn't risk. Because, risk you know, risk was like, it was lame, right? You yeah. use your units, you roll dice. There was no thought behind it. It was, it was, it was kind of on rails risk, mm-hmm. right? Because there's no mm-hmm. strategy. You, you, you tech here, you tech there. It's the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But with, with Game of Thrones, because I never played diplomacy, but I had that, that the diplomacy aspect when mm-hmm. you, you negotiate with each other and you're really thinking about tactics, you really felt like a general behind the, 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 the yeah, thinking yeah, ahead. Yeah. You have the cards and you're trying to work out the strategy. It was deterministic, there was no dice. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was just so cool. I could really surprise people. Yes. And, and then I attacked, what? Yeah. And <laughs> I then, thought you were going to, no. <laughs> and then, and this, the, the theme coming through because the map of the board was the map of Westeros, it was the real thing. And you could, oh, it just put me into that world. You felt like you were really were the Starks or the Greyjoys. Yeah. So that was what really got me excited for the hobby. And that was the, it was like that weekend I joined the meetup and joined whatever game mm. I could get myself into. And you played Dixit. <laughs> <laughs> when Actually, do we get to attack? <laughs> so I think that that's the game that really got me into hobby. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's a bit of a, off the deep end because it's quite a heavy game. 
Well, it's, it's the spark, right? Yeah. Um, for me, uh, what really got me into the hobby was Seven Wonders because I bought it. Yeah. But um, yeah, and arguably you could say Ticket to Ride. But then if I'd never gone into that shop, I would have never seen. But yeah, before that, I, I, I played a lot of like PlayStation games or Steam games. Yeah. I played a lot of uh, PC games, right? But it was it was just the social aspect that really excited me. The idea that around the table, other people, yeah. and. You know, just it just you talking to you talking on the table and you trying to work. It just it felt more personal than doing it online. Yeah, and basically you are still playing like any video game that's turn based is a, it basically a board game. Yes, with, but with there's something different about being around the table. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. Yeah. So basically you're still playing those games, but now yeah. with other people because back in, in in Belgium it was definitely a more social occasion. People come over, I yes. have like cheese and salami and yeah. wine and crisps and whatever on the table and we play and enjoy people would not use it on the cards of course but you know gotta protect your stuff but yeah so that was just always a, a nice social event yes right but in hong kong here it's a lot smaller so it's much more difficult like uh, no i can't remember the last time i played game of thrones i'd love to play it i got the expansion i never played it the one with the well, the seven-player expansion yes, yes. with um, the uh, Targaryens. I would yeah. love to play. But again, it's getting the seven players together. It's the time investment, the table space. It's all those things I just wish I could have more time. That's why I got it, and then I sold it again. And then I downloaded the app, and I didn't play the app either. But again, the app, it's just, you're missing out that whole thing about yes, people on the table. exactly. But then the reason why I sold it is because I couldn't get it to the table. Yeah. And every time, I, every time I suggested it, there were a lot of people like, meh because they're not really into Game of Thrones, and then season seven and eight didn't help. So, um, yeah, it, it, but I think with Bella Star Galactica, it doesn't really matter, but I think with Game of Thrones, it does matter. The theme. Yeah, I think if you're interested, then you're much more motivated to play. Yeah, because you get to go unless, into that world. Unless you're the Greyjoys. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I was actually the Greyjoys when I did play, and I really enjoyed the ships and being able to sail behind yeah. and attack that way. No, just, and, I enjoy my one play of the game a lot, but then that's the problem. Sometimes you enjoy one play a lot, and then you buy the game, and then you realize, oh, actually, it's really difficult to play, no, or I'm, that group had that magic. I want to keep the game because I still hope I'll be able to play it sometime soon. Yeah, I mean, eventually, who knows, you know? Uh, I don't see why not, but like seven people, we can even play it here. And if we can get six, five other people, why not? Yeah, true. Yeah. No, that's definitely my number one. It was, no, it was easy choice. Honorable mentions? Um, you go first. Which one is for you? Uh, well, the one that was my number one, but then I removed it was Seasons. I, was, I thought that would be somewhere on your list. I was yeah, it was originally list. number one. I'm until sure. Until I changed it with Mage Knight. Because but would it be number two, number three instead? Would, uh, you, would you keep... Would you no, because in the end, it has tableau building, which we already talked about. Uh, it has... Not really dice placement, but dice drafting. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a kind of a mix of all the other stuff, kind of like it has such a huge a, impact though. Such a beautiful game. Though. Yeah, because that one I wanted to play over and over yeah. and over and over. Uh, that was the second game I ever played. Yeah. That was the one that when I the first game I joined that, and Discworld. Yeah, the both. Discworld was session. also really good. Oh, it's also really good. Yeah. Lots of fun. Uh, but yeah, seasons. Game. Yeah, because it's so pretty. The art drew me like crazy, the big chunky dice, the, the combos that you can get yes. and everything. And uh, yeah, just... Uh, For me, another one would be Village. Mm. I really love that game. Yeah. It was just... It was just this, With the cubes. The cubes. <laughs> but, <laughs> again, it's it, but it's just this beautiful little world. And t- again, people, world building on things and people dying. The time system. That's another game that's been going to get a reprint and the reprint looks awful. Awful, yeah. Oh, okay. It looks, it looks, it's, it's similar kind of, it's similar kind of art to um, Kings, the new Kingsburg. Yeah, yeah. it's coming up with also in heaven. I wonder why. Why would they? Well, it's because they lose a li- uh, Someone else gets a license. They can't use the same art because yeah. they new license. And but then, then why so serious? <laughs> it's just village. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's Where so disappointing die. because they're gonna have a so- the new the one's gonna have a solo mode on it and it's gonna have uh, expansions and I really want it but I don't want that terrible artwork. So. Just play with your eyes closed. <laughs> Uh, I had Cyclades on here as yeah. well, so it's a crossover in, in that mm-hmm. way. Bellasar Galactica is also a crossover yeah. that way. Um, I had Merchants and Marauders. I didn't think of the one, eh? That's a good one. That's a good choice. Because of the whole sandbox. I want to play that game again. But actually, Mage Knight is also sandbox, but then the pirate theme and yeah, uh, yeah just... Uh, 
there was definitely also one that I enjoyed playing and wanted to play over and over yeah. again. Hiring your crew, uh, the player powers, it. yeah, attacking the NPCs. Even when you think, yeah. "Oh, this might kill me," I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, holding the money, trading, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, that was really that one. Castles of Burgundy. I I still haven't. I you know I had the copy. I tried getting into it twice, and I really didn't feel it. But solo, right? And I was like, I always stopped even before I finished the game. I was like, I don't know. Maybe I need to play with other people. Okay, so another one for me would be my first introduction to Super Super Heavy. And I still love this game. It's one of my favorite games, Sanguo. Ah, oh, Zangwa. I never played that. I know, it ends really heavy games by um, What's Your Game. Mm-hmm. It's just, it was just a brain burner. Like, Tolkien is mid to he- mid to heavy, mm-hmm. but Zangwa was heavy. Yeah. And it was just my exposure to, again, classic exposure, but the idea that there's this super crunchy games. Yeah. Did so, you have an engine builder on your list? No. Because Engine remember, Builder. Didn't think of that. The only one that I have. Nothing came out. The Engine Builders came more. Oh, ah, HMS Honorable Mentions. Duh. Okay, I have La Havre. La Havre. I don't really like. Um, uh, what's his name? I don't like his games. Well, I don't it's like not, it's not exactly pretty, um, but I enjoyed La Havre a lot because you could really like you know also like the ton of resources everywhere yeah. and then the the factories. I, have, is, I haven't got a single one of these games in my collection. Agricola, I have, but. I, I always think it's one of those games that I think starts getting good when it's over. Like Feast of Odin, I sold. Yeah? I'm like the only person in the world who doesn't like Feast of Odin. Feast of Odin. <laughs> I haven't tried that one yet. It's on my wish list. I had it and I sold it. Uh, should have sold it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with the, for example, with the Agricola, it's just that one I, 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 I have a hate love relationship with. I enjoy playing it, but then when I, once I'm really starting to get fun, it's over. Mm. So. The other thing is that it forces you to do everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have you have, yeah, true, true, true. Another game for me was Five Tribes. I have never played it, but apparently it's really good. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's the one where you, no matter what you do, you get points, right? Yes. And then we're trying to get the maximum amount of points. So now, and then the other game I was going to put, what really got me into hobby, but again, it's a worker placement. It's my, it was the worker placement that got me most excited, but it wasn't the first one, right? So it was actually Yidu. Ah, yeah. So yeah. Yidu was that, that worker placement game that really but got me excited. But I remember playing that at your place. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we really enjoyed it. It's and a great then, game. Uh, the, 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 is it also the church got burned or whatever? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That yes, was and there was no money. Uh, and then yeah. were you there when the, 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 the district got closed down the first mm-hmm. uh, last round? And Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a great game. Yeah, I really it liked is. it. But I thought Lord of War was the first one to really came into the RP. Yeah. Another one that I have is uh, Race for the Galaxy. I never played it. Uh, it's really good. You should really do it. Because another game that you, like Seven Wonders that you can just turn mm-hmm. out, play after play. And the, it was the first one that introduced me to your, your cards or your money. Okay. So you have to choose which ones you're going to be. Because basically, imagine playing Terraforming Mars, but you can't play all your cards. You have to pay for it. Use, yes. It's just it's heart-wrenching at times. And, that, and then also yeah. the fact that if you... You play uh, Terraforming Mars Eris Expedition, right? Yes. Because you, so you kind of know. It's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> kind of, but not one hundred percent. But you, you, you then know what the the bonuses you get that other people don't, and then uh, you build a tableau. Because with the Race of the Galaxy, thirteen cards and it's over, right? Uh, and then you also have to produce, get the stuff off and out. Okay. But yeah, it's you should definitely try it just to say that. No, you have I think I got. It. I think I got the app. I haven't played it yet. Oh, yeah, but the app. I, uh, <laughs> but physically, I, I really, really like it. And the last game I have here is uh, Viticulture. Ah, yes. So yeah. Again, just another worker placement. First game with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and just again, streamlined, it's a pleasant theme. It just Especially with the, the essential edition and everything. Yeah. It made it even better and better. Last one I have is Dominion. Yeah, played it. Because I had it, but then I thought it was too... Sorry for all the, the Dominion lovers, but I thought it was too boring. <laughs> But it introduced me to deck building. So you compare it to legendary, right? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, I think the theme never really spoke to me either. Yeah. So yeah. So I think that's it. We almost have as many honorable mentions as the top ten. <laughs> yeah, good choices. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and in the end we had two crossovers technically. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I can't even. I, I had Kinsberg. And. Because what happens, as you can see, Lord of War Deep is actually my honorable mentions. Yeah. Was, where I had Lord of War was supposed to be um, Kingsburg. Kingsburg, yeah. Yeah, but then the other one, oh, what's it called again? There's one more. Oh, 
Pillars of the Earth. Yeah, that's a great game. I forgot it. Because that has the uh, mechanic of pulling out of the bank. Yeah. You do it or you don't it's do it. Game. It's yeah. a great game. Do you just love it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I never got the expansion. You did, right? Because I remember the... I got the German version. I yeah. couldn't find it. Yeah. So I got a German version with paste ups. And paste it up. Yeah. I have... And I got the German version for like, like normal price, like like average price. Oh, yeah. I didn't pay. It was it was normal cost price. I have Brugge, a Bruges, Bruges. Well, with Bruges. the Italian version. I have okay. to paste it. No, that's right, Tanger. No, the Dutch version. Sorry, I have to okay. paste it up. I can you pay speak mine. Dutch? Yeah, yeah, but I cannot play it with people here. No, so I, I managed it for the, the yeah, expansion for it. That okay, was, that was really easy. All right, we're rambling again. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna finish it here, so we can do another one. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please leave comments on uh, maybe what your games are that uh, got you into the hobby. Maybe you don't have to put down 18 games like we did, but <laughs> just you know, to give an idea, and maybe it'll make our wallet lighter once again. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I was Joachim. Evangelist. Until um, next time. Bye. Bye.